Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kirsty Seeloff. I'm the Director of Government Relations for Travers Connect and the Northern Michigan Chamber Alliance. Welcome to our very first Great State Trivia Night, brought to you by our presenting sponsor, DTE, with additional support provided by Huntington. This event will showcase Michigan-themed trivia with a side of politics. Today, we'll have a little fun and also have the opportunity to hear from a number of our Grand Traverse County Commission candidates. Later during our event, we'll have our 104th State House candidates introduce themselves and read a couple rounds of trivia. We will also hear from our very own State Senator Wayne Schmidt. As you all know, we have a big election coming up on November 3rd. It's critically important for our business community that we elect leaders who care about issues important to us, especially as we address our COVID-19 recovery. Here at Travers Connect, we will be providing education to our investors through online candidate profiles for our state representative, Grand Travers County Commission, TCAPS board, and NMC board candidates. Uh, we will also be putting on a Meet the Candidates event for our state representative candidates on Tuesday, September 22nd at 6 p.m., followed by a forum for our Grand Travers County Commission candidates on Tuesday, September 29th at 6 p.m. These forums are a platform for us to understand where candidates line up on our strategic priorities for our region, and the questions are generated by you. Travers Connect and the entire coalition of 16 chambers and economic development organizations within the Northern Michigan Chamber Alliance continue to advocate for the needs of rural Northern Michigan. During the pandemic, we know how important it is to have access to our decision makers and build those relationships. Since the onset of the pandemic, the Alliance has offered access to state and federal officials and Travers Connect continues in this effort tonight with a fun opportunity to meet our Grand Travers County Commission and state rep candidates. As you all know, our advocacy is investor driven. This is done by listening to you and also the feedback generated by our government relations committee. So I would now like to introduce my advocacy partner, Rachel Johnson, chair of the Travers Connect government relations committee and member of our board of directors. Thank you, Kirsty, and I just want to thank everyone for joining us for this new event. Uh, and I and I extend that thank you to both our elected officials, our candidates, and also uh, those of you who are going to share your trivia talents with us tonight. One of the most important services that economic development organizations like Traverse Connect offers is advocacy. And as chair of the Traverse Connect Government Relations Committee, what we're really working on or what we're working to do is to drive pro-business policy that benefits Northern Michigan and is also unique to the needs of our region and our regional businesses. And we are effective at doing that because of the relationships we have with our elected officials. So tonight's event is just one of the many opportunities provided by Traverse Connect and the Northern Michigan Chamber Alliance to connect our investors with our current and future local, regional, and state leaders. And I wanna thank you for taking the time and encourage you to watch for those other events that Kirsty mentioned and future opportunities to engage. So with that, I will hand it over to Ben Ike of Craft Trivia. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ben Ike, and I'm just delighted to be here this afternoon and to uh, be able to be a part of uh, such a neat event. So uh, this evening, we have our uh, great state trivia, and we are going to be having five rounds total of trivia, three questions per round, and a final question. Final question rules, just like Jeopardy, you'll be bidding however many points you wish to bid. Each round will have different hosts. You have around two minutes or so to respond to each question. And then we have, after round two, a county commissioner candidate halftime, where each county commissioner candidate will have around two minutes to be able to further introduce themselves. Um, at this point, if you go into the chat, you should be able to select answers here. And that's also me in a separate Zoom. And you should be able to see that. And that is where you will send uh, answers privately to me so I can keep score. Um, if you could also do me a favor, I have everyone's names for their teams, but I also do not have the people that are responding what teams they are corresponding to. So if you could let me know in the chat over an answer here, uh, your name, so that way I know which person is going to be answering on behalf of the team, that would be really uh, quite helpful. Uh, you can feel free to do that um, kind of at any moment. Uh, thank you. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And then your overall point values for rounds one through three, each question is worth one point each. For rounds three through five, each question is worth two points each. And your final question is worth however many points you wish to bet. Um, if you could please message on answer here, which team you'll be answering on behalf of, that would be really helpful. Thank you. I'll, I'll need it. Oh, thank you. Perfect. <laughs> There's one.
And again, on answer here inside the chat, I have two so far that I've gotten as responses. Oh, I got three. I'm still looking for somebody for Benzie Scholars or the Smart Choice. Um, so if you see on the messenger, there's the two spot where it says all panelists. If you click into that, you should look for answer here. And that'll make sure when you answer to me, your answer is private, unless you want everyone to see your uh, wonderful trivia skills and you can get everything there that also works but it should be in the two and then you can select answer here and they might need to scroll to do it if they um have a the chat box might be too big someone said they're having trouble finding it so you might have to scroll through the participants to see answer here And then has somebody answered from Benzie Scholars? Uh, I'm looking and I'm not, I'm not seeing one. Hmm. Should be able to get everybody. I think there might be a little bit confusion. If you open up the chat box, it should pop up on the right hand side. There should be a two and it says all panelists in a blue little box and there should be a down arrow. If you click on that down arrow, you'll see a list of everyone who is currently on and there will be a name. Um, like mine says Molly McGurr, but instead of Molly, it would say answer here. So you would just click on answer here and it'll pop up in red that says privately. So that's where you can send All of your answers to Well, if it's not available, we can be flexible and uh, just have the answers be public. Hmm. Well, I'll still keep score, so that'll be good. Hmm. And they can message um, all panelists. Let's try that. Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, but then also, last call for Benzie Scholars. If there's anybody on here from there, that'll be responding, just so I know who to look for. Max Anderson, can we get you to message all panelists? Oh, does this work? Yep, it came yeah. through. And uh, I don't know if anybody else should be able to see what he just wrote. Hmm. So that's perfect. Let's, mess let's have you guys message all panelists. That way we can record the answers and um, we'll do it that way. That way the other partic people participating won't be able to see what your answers are. That's fine with me. All right, so our agenda. We have in our very first two rounds, three questions each, and then we have our county commissioner candidates halftime. And then the last two rounds, will be three questions each. This will be last three rounds, my apologies. And then your final question. So coming up first is Carla Gribbs. She's our regional manager and corporate for government affairs at DTE. Carla, are you on? I am, good afternoon. Wonderful, go right ahead. <laughs> hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think uh, COVID has brought out the creativity juices in uh, Traverse Connect, so uh, <laughs> good, good to, to the whole team for uh, giving us a great way to meet some candidates and as well as have, have, have some fun. So thank you, Kirstie and Molly and Warren and the others. Um, I, you've heard the adage, uh, good government and good policy is made by those who show up well. Thank you to everybody showing up today. Uh, particularly thank you to the candidates um, who have put their hat in the ring. I personally, and also on behalf of DTE Energy, appreciate your willingness to step up to the plate. Um, your platform, your policy, your party is not as important as the fact that you're willing to participate in uh, helping make our communities great. And so I thank you for that. Um, I certainly believe that good government, quality government is really important to the, the economy, um, the economic health of our region. And I'm pleased to see that there are so many quality candidates that are vying for positions. So um, we certainly see ourselves, DTE does, as a partner with good government and, and as a partner in improving community wealth. So to that end, we're doing a lot to help and try to help local businesses. Make, we're making significant investments in our uh, 
our infrastructure in the Grand Traverse region to improve the reliability of natural gas. And we're also um, supporting many organizations through our corporation and the DT Energy Foundation, uh, such as economic development organizations like Traverse Connect, Venture North, and others in um, Northern Michigan, um, all towards the end of helping to make businesses, helping businesses get through this pandemic. You know, the foundation has given more than ever before to these types of organizations, and we're pleased to be able to do that. Um, certainly, if you have any questions about energy and your, as you uh, go down the path of your candidacy or as you get involved in government more, don't ever hesitate to give us a call, give myself a call. Um, we're one of the largest employers and certainly the largest taxpayer in the state, and uh, we're happy to help share our thoughts and find you answers to any questions you may have. So with that, I think we're ready to move to the first round of questions, correct? Indeed we are. Looks like your topic is Michigan food. Oh, my favorite. Okay. <laughs> so now you're going to have, what, two and a half minutes? So here we go. <laughs> In what city is the oldest continually operating Coney Island operating from the same location in Michigan since 1915? And I can't believe this. The hint says it's not Detroit. Well, American and... Uh, uh, Lafayette. Lafayette, Coney Island, sorry, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, teams, you've got uh, two minutes in counting and uh, you want to Ben go over where they should be putting their answers again while they're thinking of that answer? Uh, please put into the chat and since um, it's difficult to find answer here, uh, it's okay to send it to all panelists and I'll use that to keep score. Right. So as soon as you have the answer to in what city is the oldest continuing operating Coney Island operating from the same location in Michigan since 1915. As soon as you have that, put it in that uh, location to all panelists and we will select or let you know the answer shortly. Five years of hot dogs and chili sauce, mustard and onions. <laughs> And if you're like me, you buy frozen bricks of it and take it to parties. Ooh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I grew up in the Flint area, so Kogel was always uh, uh, pretty much any picnic in the summertime. That was what I, I kind of grew up on. <laughs> yeah. My brother comes all the way from D.C. just to make sure he gets a Coney every time he visits. He's like, okay, got to stop at the Coney Island. <laughs> Okay, so how many answers do we have so far? We're still waiting for, uh, I think, somebody. We currently have uh, three, and we have everybody. We are all in, all across the board. Okay. And the answer, and the answer is? Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. There it is. <laughs> and I think we've got some pretty smart panels, or, or uh, participants, shall we say. Okay. Second question. Here we go. Calumet, Michigan, annually in mid-August celebrates an annual festival honoring this Upper Peninsula favorite dish. Pass the gravy and pass the ketchup. <laughs> okay. If anybody gets this wrong, we're doing a trip to the UP, okay? We're going all the way to Calumet. <laughs> Again, Calumet, Michigan annually in mid-August celebrates an annual festival honoring this specific UP favorite dish. Some have it with gravy and some have it with ketchup. Thank you, Smart Choice. Smart Choice. And... We're all in, and this was a four for four. Everybody got this one right. What's our the answer? answer? Is the pasty, <laughs> the pasty fest, super. Very okay, good. moving right along. Sharpen your pencils on this last food question. According to Food Timeline, Lake Superior whitefish was the favorite food of this four-year, four-term, not four-year, four-term president. Who was this president? According to Food Timeline, no Googling this question. <laughs> Lake Superior Whitefish was the favorite food of this four term president. I think this is a little harder than the past. A little bit. How many four term presidents have we had? 
Hmm. Not, not, not too many. <laughs> All right, how are we doing so far? We've got, I think, a we got couple answers. Three in. We're waiting on one more. <laughs> I feel like we should have some, um, you know, Jeopardy music or something. Or, you, know. you know, I've actually thought about uh, buying like a little keyboard and maybe there playing you a, little bit, you know, a little interlude uh, during, uh, during the uh, decision making process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, we've got, I think, one more waiting for one more team, right? We sure are. You have 55 seconds left. Ooh. <laughs> And that is another four out of four. Okay, and the answer is FDR. There he is. Franklin Delano. <laughs> All, All right. right, I think I'm done. You sure are, thank you so much. That was wonderful. And coming up next for round two, we have State Senator Wayne Schmidt. Senator Schmidt, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. All right, go right on ahead, sir. All right, well, uh, greetings to everyone from the Capitol down here working on the K-12 and transportation budgets. and. Uh, thank you to Warren, Kirsty, and Molly for putting this on today. Uh, this was uh, this is a great idea. And Carla, you did a great job. I was just uh, touring again some of the work DTE was doing uh, just yesterday. So, thank you. So I'm ready. You ready? All right. I'm ready. What's your topic, uh, Senator? Uh, Michigan. Uh, yeah, the Michigan sports. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got to, uh oh, I can't read this question because I got to move this little uh, thing right here. There we go. This sports franchise joined their league in 1901 and is the oldest one city, one franchise team in their league. So, so that's the question. <laughs> Shouldn't be that tough. It is Michigan sports. <laughs> Already narrows it down. Yeah. <laughs> At least it's not, well, I don't know, who knows, we'll see. I do know uh, my, uh, my roommate in Lansing lives at the Hayford House. Jack O'Malley would get this one very easily. Okay. Representative O'Malley would know it in a heartbeat. <laughs> Wait, it's not the pit spitters, is it? No, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> <clears throat> but somewhere near and dear to your heart, Carla, close by. <laughs> yep. You got everybody in here, Senator. Are you ready? Our answer. I am. The answer is the Detroit Tigers. Woohoo! <laughs> there we go. Let's do this. Okay. Next question, founded in 1995 and folded in 2018, this baseball team played in the Frontier League and had three league championships. Now this one should not take that long, <laughs> I hope. If, if, if this one takes a long time to answer, I'm worried about our contestants. Very worried. <laughs> Life's all about priorities, Senator. Well, baseball should be a priority. <laughs> <laughs> answers are coming in aren't they ben they are they are i wish you could Good. see i have a big monitor up and i have a spreadsheet going with the scoreboard and then i have another zoom going with the chat stream so i can see the answers rolling in ah good <laughs> yep it's a it's a two computer job over here are they almost in uh we got a good number in we have one to go or two to go, actually. This one, yeah. We got them all in. Uh, that's a four out of four. Our yeah, it is. Traverse City Beach Bums. There we go. 
There they are. And that was that was always fun going to those games. <laughs> so, all right. We've got the last one here. And he had trouble with the snap, and the ball was free. What Michigan State football player fell into the end zone with no time left in the game to secure a stunning upset of the U of M football team in 2015? I know we were talking about this one earlier. People were saying this one's burned into their brain. So <laughs> I think most people in Michigan remember that play. I was All there. too well. Some, some very happy, some very unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it was five years ago. Yeah, that, it, it is. I, I didn't go to school in Michigan. I, I, I left Traverse City and went out of state. But uh, I know a lot of my friends that were both Michigan and, and Michigan State fans were, uh, yeah, that, that was a heck of a game, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. So, are the answers coming in? Uh, nothing quite yet. Nothing quite yet. I think people this are. This is a little thinking. trickier, the name. Everyone remembers the play, they just don't always remember the uh, names. See, I was there, and I remember because I, I'm a Michigan alumni, and all I wanted to do was whistle to call it back. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, five years later, I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah. My wife's a Notre Dame grad, so she. Uh, <laughs> she wasn't crying for you, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Kathleen was probably happy, but it's not like she loves Michigan State, though, either. So, uh, you know, Notre Dame's had its challenges with both schools. Certainly. I see some answers coming in. We got a few of them coming in. Got a few seconds left there. There we go. Do we have them all in? We have them all in. And uh, we, some of them got them. Jalen Watts Jackson, that's the, uh, that's the man of the hour. And, oh, there's the picture. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, some people are very depressed now. Oh, nice going, Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. Give me a brief moment here. I need to compile scores. By the way, I saw the go green, so go white. <laughs> Update and share. Back to share. And oh. here we are at halftime. Our points at halftime. The Benzie Scholars, I do not think they uh, showed up, but we have a very close game. We have Alternative Facts with six, The Smart Choice with six, Samaritas Senior Living with six, and the TCYPs with four. Nice. So, Coming up well, nope. <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks again, Ben. Really enjoyed playing. Now it's uh, back to work on the budgets. Best of luck. Thanks for joining. Thank thanks. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank Bye -bye. you, Senator. Thanks, Christy. Coming up next, we have the Grand Traverse County Commissioner candidate introductions. We are going to begin with Betsy Kofia, and then we have Melissa Hogan, and then Brace Kern, Jade Prang, Prang I apologize. Bruce Moore and Daryl Nelson. Betsy, are you here? Yes, I sure am. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I must apologize that I can't, uh, I have to make a decision and maybe some of you are in the same uh, boat with rural Wi-Fi. You either get good sound quality or good video, but not both at the same time. So <laughs> apologies for not showing my face, but um, I'm happy to be here and thank you so much uh, to, uh, to, uh, Travers Connect and the sponsors for the opportunity to speak with all of you and to all the participants um, for a chance to talk about my candidacy. So I'm a Grand Tra I'm currently a Grand Travers County Commissioner uh, serving my first term in District 1. Now that is uh, uh, the east side of the city of Traverse City as well as Peninsula Township. But I do want to be really clear um, that it is important to me that we as elected officials understand the decisions that we make do not stop at the edges of these artificial lines that are drawn. My responsibility is to conserve constituents of the entire county. 
uh, no matter where they live. We're a 464 square mile uh, land mile county and every person uh, in our community is impacted by the decisions that the county commission makes. So an example uh, for of this um, and the idea of constituent services being front and center. Uh, recently, uh, earlier this year, feels like forever ago because it was pre-COVID, but um, we had some residents, um, taxpayers, um, homeowners out in the Kingsley and Fife Lake area who are very far from my district here in town, but they had really been frustrated reaching out to us, lots of emails coming and making public comment. They had some concerns um, with challenges of noise levels and other issues at, uh, because of the Camp Pugsley firing range, which the county uses uh, for our sheriff's department and others to stay current with their certifications. And so for me, I had a choice. I could say, well, that's Commissioner so-and-so's district, not my problem. But um, again, in the spirit of like, we need to serve our entire community, I really went to bat and advocated working directly with these folks um, out in Fife Lake and Kingsley to make sure that we got this matter a full hearing, got it on the agenda, advocated and worked toward a fair solution uh, that would address these folks' concerns and also support our law enforcement in getting their needed range time. So I just use that as sort of a concrete example of where what I feel rubber hits the road. I really believe that government should be interactive and responsive to constituents. And you can't really be responsive if you don't make a point of asking what folks are thinking. And so um, one of the other things that I have done in, in the interest of constituent services has probably been the most active advocate on the board for uh, in stating what other uh, counties and municipalities have done, which is setting up regular um, professionally conducted surveys of the taxpayers whose money we are spending, right? To get a read on resident satisfaction with their county services. We have dozens of departments, you know, erosion, soil erosion, um, you know, senior services, veteran services, to make sure that we are really getting a read on folks' satisfaction with those services and overall satisfaction with quality of life. And I'm very excited that for the first time, certainly in recent history, I'm not sure how long ago um, we would have done this last survey, but um, we have instated one um, in July of this year. And so that is another way that um, constituent services shows up in, in the work that I do. So I was elected in 2018. I am running for re-election and my husband and I, a little bit about me, we are proud first time homeowners uh, here in the city of Traverse City. We've lived here for the last several years uh, with our rescue dog packs. Um, I've lived in this region since I was five. I've dedicated a lot of volunteer hours to education like mentoring at TCAPS at our Traverse Heights and Blair Elementary. And I've also been a volunteer for a lot of health and human services organizations like the Children's Advocacy Center, Habitat for Humanity and Conflict Resolution Services. I'm also a small business owner and a community organizer with an organization called We the People Michigan. Earlier in my career, I was a newspaper reporter and editor for over six years. And that really, frankly, has been very useful in my work on the commission because I really try to be objective, to look at different sides of tough issues. And I make it a point of pride to do my homework, do my research, and really try to come prepared to these meetings, uh, taking seriously that we are, again, making decisions on behalf of a county of 94,000 taxpayers and, and our local businesses, and that is an important job. Um, my uh, highest priority, and I'm wrapping up, this is my last, uh, Thank last Thank statement. I'm sorry? No, no, go ahead, uh, but please wrap up. We have- Wrapping you know. it up. <laughs> uh, so my highest priority really is to make every decision in the public interest and really embedding everything in ethics, transparency, and accountability. I wanna see our county be a leader in housing solutions and environmental stewardship. And I think there's a lot of opportunity and need for us to do more. And that is part of why I am running again. And I would be honored to have your support uh, to uh, have a second term to serve you um, in 2021 and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Melissa Hogan, are you on? Yes, nope. All right. Yes, and I am. Are you okay? You're on, yep. Can you okay. I can. Thank you so much. Um, as he said, my name is Melissa Hogan, and I am running for Grand Traverse County Commissioner in District 3. Um, it's quite a large district. It encompasses most of Garfield and a bit of Blair. Um, the impetus for me to run was some unintended downtime due to being involved in a car accident. I've been a licensed physician assistant for over 20 years and have been primarily working through the Munson system, but due to the multitude of um, 
injuries and surgeries that I had to recover from um, that sort of precluded me from being able to go back in that capacity. So, um, you know, I've always been very community oriented and I have volunteered extensively both with TCAPS, um, Goodwill Industries and all sorts of different um, opportunities where I can contribute to the community. And I felt as though once uh, that this would be a very good way that I could continue to contribute to the betterment of the community. Um, some of my special skill sets, if you will, um, I'm a very solutions oriented person. I love to try and create win-win scenarios, um, even if that means people sort of give a little bit on both ends just to try to get things to work. Um, I did pilot, um, I don't know if some of you may or may not be familiar with a lean concept um, and was instrumental in implementing that and that was very successful and that is a concept uh, in some form that I would be interested in trying to bring to our um, community at the county commission level. I feel there's a lot of value in that, especially given the economic circumstances of our community post COVID. Um, I do feel um, it would be instrumental in helping to propel us in a positive direction. Um, a couple of my passions for this particular uh, role would be the affordable housing crisis that we are literally, I think I can call it a crisis at this point. I mean, it has been an ongoing issue. I know many people have made some attempts oh, at solving yeah. it. Your, your time's just um, about up. Do you, if you don't okay. mind wrapping up, thank you. Okay, absolutely, I will. And so um, again, thank you for having me. My name is Melissa Hogan and I look forward to um, talking with you again sometime. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Ray Kern, are you on? Yes, hello, Traverse Connect shareholders. Go right Thank ahead. Thank you for hosting this event. Um, my name is Brace Kern, and this is my wife, Jessica. We uh, live off of West Long Lake Road. I'm running for County Commission District 4, for Sunny Wheelox Old Seat. And um, we have a two year old daughter and another on the way in February. Uh, we moved to Michigan. So I grew up in Lapeer, went to Michigan State undergrad, and uh, worked for the governor of California a Republican back when it was Pete Wilson during the uh, legislative days. And then I went to North Carolina to go to law school at Chapel Hill. Didn't care for the South so much. Uh, decided I'd go join the Yankees, as they, they called us. So went to New York, went to law school on Long Island at Hofstra. Um, worked for the Nassau County attorney on Long Island in the General Litigation Bureau. And uh, went to Europe, studied law there under Judge Anton Scalia, as well as a month-long program in East France. Uh, it was the bug. Uh, came back and obtained a political asylum for a former member of Nepalese Parliament. Did trial team and then finished law school and started a medical malpractice defense in New York. Uh, switched sides, started doing some plaintiff's work uh, before moving back to Michigan. We came to Northern Michigan, took a year off in my cabin in the woods. Uh, <laughs> That made us fall, <laughs> and made a New Yorker fall in love with Northern Michigan uh, once we got to Traverse City. And we've been here about 10 years. Uh, I became the president of our association here. I volunteer at uh, Conflict Resolution Services as a mediator. And after about five years of practicing law, I opened my own practice. Been running that for about five years, handling civil litigation locally. My office is off uh, Veterans Drive next to the VFW. And uh, our roots are here, and I'm looking forward to a long future and want to help Grand Traverse County stay in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Jade, are you on? Hi. Hi. Go right ahead. Okay, so my name is Jade Prang. I am 21 years old and I grew up in Kingsley. Um, I attend NMC and I work at a nursing home as a caregiver. Um, so, I know it's kind of weird for, I guess, 21 year olds to run for office. I don't really know anyone else my age who has, but um, I kind of got moved to action back in 2018 following the Kavanaugh hearing. Um, I was really disappointed not only with 
his nomination and appointment, but the reaction of the public and the community, um, especially in regards to um, their treatment of Dr. Ford. And I'm a survivor of sexual assault. I was assaulted when I was 16, and it took until the Kavanaugh hearings um, for me really feeling that collective outrage um, going through that whole experience again that I decided it was time for me to stand up for myself and I went to the police, I filed a report and just decided that it was time to speak my truth no matter who decided to believe me or not. Um, and then after kind of learning how to use my voice, you know, for the first time um, and advocate for myself, I started looking for ways to advocate for other people. Um, so I started attending protests and rallies and um, I joined groups, started volunteering for environmental groups like the Sunrise Movement, which I am a local leader of. Um, I was appointed to the Human Rights Commission. And um, yeah, I started attending county commission meetings. So I started um, thinking about running because there were some things going on that I didn't really like. I didn't like that the board wasn't prioritizing the environment. I didn't like the lack of representation and I didn't like um, that they weren't really holding themselves accountable, um, that they didn't really want to be held to a higher ethical standard. Um, and so, yeah, I just figured the majority of the board didn't really seem to care about people like me or my voice, people who thought differently than them. So I just think we deserve better leaders who care about people in the community and are passionate about transparency. Thank you, Jade. Next, we have Bruce Moore. Bruce, are you on? Yes, I'm Bruce Moore. I'm running for County Commission District 6. First, I'd like to talk a little bit about, about my biography and then about the issues that motivate me for running. I grew up in Mount Pleasant, uh, Michigan, went to school at the University of Michigan, studied chemical engineering there. And upon graduation, along with virtually all of my classmates, I went to work out of state. Uh, in my case, I went to IBM in upstate New York, then subsequently transferred to Dallas and during my time at IBM, earned two master's degrees, started a doctoral program, realized that if I stayed at IBM, I wouldn't finish it, went to work for one of my customers, uh, finished my doctorate of engineering, and after a health crisis in 2009, I decided to quit my job, ride a bicycle across the United States and start my own business in 2010. Upon my wife's retirement in 2014, I got less interested in the business world and for all practical purposes, retired in 2016. My wife and I moved to Grand Traverse County in 2018, and I started attending county commission meetings and was really disturbed by what I saw. One of the motivating factors for my running for office is the lack of transparency on our county commission. At the very least, I think that our county commission should have a conflict of interest notification as an agenda item at the beginning of every meeting, exactly as is done in our township trustee meetings. I'm also motivated by doing some overnights at Safe Harbor and seeing people who have full-time jobs who can't afford housing in this county and live in a homeless shelter. That's just not the way we need to run our county. Those were the motivating issues in March. Today, we really need to add two additional motivating issues. Uh, Bruce, One, you've had two minutes, if you don't mind winding up. Okay, uh, the other two issues are, this county is gonna experience some very rapid growth, and I've seen what goes wrong in, in, in the Dallas area, which tripled in the time that we were there. I don't wanna see Grand Traverse County make those same mistakes. We also need to preserve our business infrastructure as we go through the pandemic, and those are the two new motivating issues for me. Thank you for your time. And if you have questions about my campaign, see my website, brucemoregtcounty.com. Thank you, Bruce. 
Uh, Daryl, are you on? Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Go right ahead. Hi, thank you. One of the good things about going last is you get to finish up, but the bad thing is, is you, people want you to be done. So I'll promise to be done within the two minutes. So my name is Daryl Nelson. My family's been in the area since 1947. I uh, went away to college for four years and worked two years downstate. Couldn't wait to get back up here. So I've really been following uh, this area, the news, the politics for over 50 years. Uh, I was involved in uh, 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 community, or, uh, community volunteering as a young child or something that my family has always insisted upon and that I've insisted upon with my own children. I look at serving on county commission as one of those type of things. It's another way to serve the community. I'm currently an ACME trustee. I uh, like that position, um, but I decided to run for county commissioner. And I, I, my district is Acme, Whitewater, and uh, the north part of East Bay Township. And um, I'm a business owner, a small business owner in the area. Uh, been doing that for over 30 years. I enjoy Grand Traverse County and all that it offers. I raised my family here. I brought my wife here from another part of the state, met her in college. She loves it here. And we have uh, my, my oldest child and her husband have bought a house here. So we're hoping to have another generation, which would be the fourth generation in Traverse City. So why do I run for Grand Traverse County? It's this area is important to me. I want to have a long term goal looking 20 years down the road, not two years down the road. Uh, I, my, my family's been here for a long, long time and I hope to stay here for a long, long time. So Thank you very much to all the candidates for being here today and your willingness to run. And thanks to Trent Trevor's Tre 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 Connect for putting this on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daryl. All right, coming up next, we have round three, which will be hosted by the Traverse Connect CEO, Warren Call. Warren, are you on? I am, Ben. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Warren Call, and I have the honor of leading the efforts here at Traverse Connect. On behalf of our board of directors and our team, thank you for joining us. Traverse Connect's advocacy, government relations, and voter education are central to our efforts to support our member companies and our entire community. It's designed to drive our economy forward and grow family-sustaining careers, which is our mission here at Traverse Connect. So thank you to the participants. Thank you to the elected officials and candidates for joining us today. And, I, and I'll note that in addition to the contestants and the participants here live, the event recording will be on our website and get many, many more views. So your, uh, your position candidates will be out there for all to see. So thanks again for, for contributing and participating. I'm excited to jump into round three questions. And let me tell you, the softball questions are now over. It'll be a little bit more difficult going forward. But first, I want to share a few quick did you knows from Travers Connect, just as a little bit of an update. Did you know number one? So far, we've had over 1,700 downloads of the new Creative Coast podcasts. And these podcasts, the broadcasts on Interlock and Public Radio have had 4,500 weekly listeners. So thanks to IPR for that partnership. This program is supporting our talent attraction and entrepreneurial efforts. Did you know number two? Venture North and Traverse Connect have distributed nearly $350,000 in micro grants to small businesses through the Regional Resiliency Fund. These and other emergency funds are supporting our local businesses to rebuild and thrive here in the Grand Traverse area. Did you know number three? Traverse Connect has nearly 7,000 total views of our virtual events and forums, including today's event. That's since mid-March. It's covered dozens of executive orders from the governor's office, the CARES Act, and many other topics. And I don't want to run past my time. So the last thing on here, the new Traverse Connect website has had over 34,000 visitors since its rollout in February, and we continue to build our communications effort for the community. All this is made possible by you, our member businesses and our organizations. So thank you for your support and for helping us to lead regional growth efforts. Ben, let's get started. Let's do it. Your topic, Michigan Places. All right. Elm Hall, Michigan, is home to the smallest this 
in Michigan. It is so small, during the holidays, they bring in a trailer for extra storage. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that was a softball question. I hope it's not. We'll see. We'll see. I didn't buy it. Yep, we got people thinking it over. All right, how are we looking? We have one more team to go. I um, actually was kind of curious. You mentioned the uh, the seven thousand. Um, that's that's remarkable. I mean, that's really an innovative uh, approach that Travis Connect is taking. I was really excited to kind of learn a little bit more just about the different types of uh, approaches Travis Connect is taking, especially you know in response to what's happening with COVID. Well, we you know we followed the example of our companies here. Uh, when times got tough, they innovated. They pivoted, they, they created new ways of doing things, and, and we followed that lead by moving a whole host of events online. And uh, that uh, there's a silver lining to, the, to that kind of move because we probably ended up with far more viewership of our events and programs than we would have if they had stayed live. I love the optimism and seeing the good things among all this. So we're all in, and believe it or not, we're, in, we're four out of four on this one. I think we're giving them too much time. Yeah. <laughs> the answer here is the post office. There it is. The smallest in Michigan. All right. This Southwest Michigan town is known as the magic capital of the world, complete with a magician's walk of fame with 16 bronze stars. And I'm sure Molly's taking notes. We'll probably cut the time on some of these questions in the future, so it's not so easy to Google. We can do that. <laughs> While we're waiting for those answers to come in, just a reminder that in addition to this event, we will have a number of candidate forums, as Kirsty mentioned. We'd love to have the uh, participation at those events. We really want to make sure that everyone is very informed and updated on the positions of our various candidates at all levels of government, and to make sure that our members understand how these candidates' positions match up with our economic development priorities and our policy priorities. So again, thanks for uh, attending this and hopefully we can have you at future events as well. And Warren, just to add to that, we'll also have um, those online uh, profiles also available if you can't catch the live event. But of course we record everything and put it online. So we've got state rep coming up next Tuesday and the following Tuesday is uh, county commission. That's a great resource. Happy to hear a little more about that. <laughs> All right, Ben, we're coming down to it. Coming down to it. Looking for, whoa, oh, we got both in. All right. Two out of four teams got this one. All right. The answer, Cologne. Cologne, oh. Michigan, the magic capital of Michigan. <laughs> Now, for some of you, this may be an easy one. For others, perhaps not. In the mid-1970s, this rock and roll band played a homecoming concert in Cadillac, high school's gym. There's an eight-foot-tall monument to the event in Cadillac, positioned between Lake Cadillac and the Viking football field.
bonus points, which I think is really weird. My daughter in high school thinks this band is cool. Whoa. <laughs> See, when we were putting the show together, one of the things I thought about was doing a Michigan music round because there's just so much, there's so much history and heritage here with that. Um, but unfortunately, we ran out of space. <laughs> Next time. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, we got some fans in this crowd. Four out of four for this. Are you ready? <laughs> that was quick. All right, Kiss, the one and only. The, Wanted the to rock the night. Yeah. All right, thanks very much, Ben. Thank you, appreciate you being on. Um, up next for round four, we have Dan O'Neill, a Democrat running for the 104th State House District. Dan, are you with us? I'm here, Ben. Wonderful, go right ahead. Oh, thanks so much. And uh, thanks to you and Kirsty and Molly for putting this together. I think it's a, it's a great event. And, and thank you for, uh, for inviting me. So I'm Dan O'Neill. I'm, I'm an attorney uh, and mediator uh, from here in Traverse City, a, a small business in the form of a law firm, Thompson O'Neill on, on Front Street. I'm practicing law from there for about 30 years. And, and I just wanted to, to say, um, you know, express my gratitude and appreciation for Traverse Connect. I mean, we're all going through, I think, um, one of the strangest uh, business experiences uh, that, that, we've, that we've ever had, um, as well as, as, as the other experiences that this pandemic has, has brought. And I think Traverse Connect has just done a terrific job in, um, in providing a steady hand, great advice to businesses uh, uh, throughout the county. Um, and, and, you know, following the science and, 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 and providing us with reasonable advice has been really valuable. And, and I just want to say, just want to say thank you for that. As for me, I grew up here in, in Traverse City and raised my family here. Um, uh, live on 9th Street uh, with, my, with my wife, Maura. Uh, our three kids are now through college. Thank you very much. Uh, and, um, and I, uh, in addition to practicing law, I've served on the Executive Board of Common Cause Michigan, uh, served on the uh, Executive Board of the Michigan Association for Justice, uh, 10 years on the Traverse City Planning Commission, uh, several as chair. I've um, also served on the Joint Commission with Garfield Township uh, to do the initial planning and, uh, and uh, draft the ordinances uh, for the Grand Traverse Commons, uh, which was a terrific experience uh, experience for me. I decided to run for office when it seemed like to me that, that most of the people in our community have the same goals and, and agree with uh, and agree about what the problems are that we face. We want great education. We want to protect the water. We want a decent and honest, transparent government in Lansing. And that we didn't seem to be able to accomplish those things. And it just seemed to me that when we agree on, on what our needs are and we have some sense of what the solutions ought to be and we can't get it done, it's time to stand up and try and do something about it. So, so that's why I'm running for office. Our campaign is about bringing the community together, uh, coming together, finding solutions uh, to build a community that we're proud of. And uh, that's where we are. So with that, Ben, I think we're on to the questions. All right, your topic is Michigan contemporary political history. There we go. All right, question one. He ran and lost to Rick Snyder in 2010 for governor. However, this former Lansing mayor has gained immortality by having a beer at the Lansing Brewing Company named after him. Angry Mayor IPA. Angry Mayor IPA. Can't be in Michigan history without at least one beer question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't know that I've had anything from Lansing Brewing Company, but uh, but we have some great brew pubs here in town. Rare Bird, just knocking it out of the park. A couple of hops farms up there too that uh, I know about. Um, I have a friend that's a hops farmer up there. Looks like this one's a little bit harder. Yeah. yeah. Answers are taking a little longer. 
10 years yes. ago, a lot happened. <laughs> and Warren thought the kiss thing was going to be a stumper. This one's <laughs> a little tougher. I do have to say, though, your daughter being a kiss fan, it, that's a little out there, Warren. And it's a credit to her parents, right, for exposing them to all sorts of interesting things. Yeah, Dan, I would take credit for that if I had been a kiss fan. <laughs> yeah, me neither. But, you know, I mean, to each his own. <laughs> I credit the uh, the movies like the, uh, the Bohemian Rhapsody movie and a couple others that have really brought the 70s music to the fore with with the high school age kids. Yeah, I think you're right. Our kids the same way. It's those it's those old movies. Waiting on one. <laughs> All right, and your answer? Verge Bernero, Mayor Verge Bernero <laughs> from Lansing. A little, again, a little esoteric. How'd they do? Uh, we had two out of four teams have that right. Uh, see, yeah. As a trial lawyer, I'm used to people not knowing the answers to my questions. So, so on to the next one. All right, question two. This former Michigan senator will have an Arleigh Burke class destroyer in the Navy named in his honor. Makes sense, as he was the chair of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Former Michigan Senator. Senator. A destroyer. Yeah. What's that? Juwan Howard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a minute left. <laughs> I believe we've got some jokers on some of these teams here. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we're all in. All right. Any answer. Any answer. <laughs> <laughs> and our and the answer is Senator Carl Levin. Senator Carl Levin, solid Democrat. You got to love Carl. And we're on to question three. Chaston was born in Traverse City and is the, the husband of this recent presidential candidate. Chaston was born in Traverse City and is the husband of this recent presidential candidate. And here we go. <laughs>
So I thought it was interesting that this is a trivia night that starts at four o'clock in the afternoon. I just wondered what the, <laughs> this is the, maybe the first question was, if you expected to attend a trivia night, would you hope that it began A, in the morning, <laughs> in the afternoon, <laughs> or C? Trivia in the evening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The early bird special. For, I think I yeah, think we wanted it to be kind of like a happy hour, like our pints and politics would have been. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in a, in a different circumstance, this would have been something that I would have been up in Traverse City helping out and doing in person, and you know, hopefully someday we can do that. It'd be awesome. Yeah, fun. <laughs> absolutely. I think we're all in. If you're ready, we're ready. The right. answer to question three is Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining us. Thank and you, Ben. Up, Thanks to all of you. Enjoyed it. Thank you. And up next for round five, we have John Roth, the Republican candidate for the 104th State House District. John, are you with us? I'm here, Ben. All right. Go right ahead. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Travers Connect, for having me on. I really appreciate it. Get a quick intro of me. I'm running for one real simple reason, and that's to keep this place and make this place in Grand Traverse County uh, something that my own daughters might stay here and live and, and be prosperous and get jobs and then maybe settle down and have a family here. I think there's some real issues that are going to potentially keep some of our youth from being here. That is the housing issue and also uh, daycare issues that are going on. We're losing daycares because of regulations at the state level. So I want to work on all those and, and work in keeping our young people here. Uh, skilled labor is a real huge issue for us here. As I go around and knock doors, talk to people, uh, so many people tell me they can't find help. And as Traverse City and Grand Traverse County as a whole grow 7% every decade, uh, we need that. And I think we need to work on our colleges to provide those services and education and also start them younger at the Career Tech Center. So. That's number one. Uh, education equity is always huge in our area. We know we don't get the funds back. We are a donor county like we are in other areas like uh, transportation. Um, something we will continue to work on, of course. And then regulations like those day daycare regulations. We don't want to take away daycare regulations that help and keep the kids safe. It's those other, other regulations that uh, keep daycares from opening or closing them down. Those are things we really need to work on. So. I'm, I've got a high priority for that. Um, I married to a lovely wife that has been an RN at a local hospital for the last 33 years. Uh, we got two daughters and one just went to Grand Valley and trying to figure out what to do down in Grand Valley as they're online down there now. So uh, we're, we're working hard and, and the family's working hard and we'll keep going. Uh, I think part of the thing that the state rep for this area uh, is and should be as somebody that's very diverse in their background. I've done three jobs for the last 18 years. Uh, I was on the Parks and Rec Commission for Grand Traverse County for the last six, four of those as chairs. And I just think a diverse background for how diverse of an area are, we are is very important. And I'll, I'll leave with that and I appreciate it. Appreciate the time. Thank you, John. And your uh, topic for your round is Michigan political history. All right. <laughs> we like it. What deceased U.S. Senator from Grand Rapids is credited with the participating in the creation of the United Nations and in 1943 lobbied fellow Republicans on the porch of the Grand Hotel to take more internationalist approach to foreign policy? And part of the extra the, I just realized that as you were reading it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I actually might know this guy or have known him. N not back in 1943, I guarantee you that. I wasn't going to follow up. <laughs> <laughs> a little later. <laughs> Definitely. Right there on the Grand Hotel porch, right? <laughs> I've been there a few times myself. What a great place. Love to be there. Uh, every couple years, I don't know how many people know, but every two years, the Republican Party in, in, in Michigan meet at the Grand Trovers Hotel, or the Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island for a leadership conference. And uh, it's always in September, always a blast. And uh, we kind of take over a little Mackinac Island and uh, get some funny looks sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. 
I could imagine September on Mackinac Island. The weather, though, you, you never really know. Oh, you probably miss. <laughs> <laughs> you got to prepare for uh, weather, I, but also pack a T-shirt because you just never know. <laughs> I can tell you about three years ago, it was 90 degrees for the weekend, the whole weekend. And last year was about 70. So <laughs> it's so, always interesting. Yeah, my, I have family in Petoskey, and I was up there just recently, and I, I couldn't get over. I mean, it gets really, really cold and then really warm. I mean, you'll have a 40-degree swing in a day uh, this time of oh, day. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of my first times on Mackinac Island for the conference, I was on my boat, and we woke up on Sunday morning. It was 32 degrees. Ooh. <laughs> my uncle always, um, in Petoskey, he'll send me a note every time in the morning. He always has his coffee on his porch, and he, the first day he feels the first hint of fall in the air, he'll send me a message and say, oh, I feel it. I know it's coming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Looking for one more. All right. All right, we're all in. The answer, answer is Arthur Vandenberg, a senator from Michigan. <laughs> Question two, a governor's mansion was built in this town located next to where I-94 and I-90 or I-69 intersect. Of course, Lansing was selected to be the capital instead. So this mansion has been used for various community activities since. Also important, this town is a home to Dark Horse Brewing Company. What is the name of this town? It takes a certain level of confidence to just build a governor's mansion when you don't even have it locked down. <laughs> <laughs> I must have seen something in the area, right? <laughs> and I haven't had a Dark Horse Brewing Company beverage either. <laughs> Ooh, people sure seem to know what they were looking they, at, though. They, must be the brewery company. <laughs> I think that was a good hint. <laughs> Could have used that for the last question. Yeah. <laughs> four out of four on this one. Your answer? Answer is Marshall, Michigan. I actually have an Uncle Marshall that lives in Marshall, Michigan. That's all crazy. But, um, <laughs> anyway. Question uh, number three. Lewis Cass is one of the two statues representing people from Michigan in the United States Capitol. Who is the other statue? A, man, a Michigan man who passed away in 2006. If I'm not mistaken, I think Lewis Cass also has a statue in the Supreme Court. I believe you're right. I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I wouldn't bet a lot of money, but I thought I saw it when I was in it. Okay. Touring, of course. See, that's a, a bucket list thing for me is to someday play basketball in the highest court of all the land. In the <laughs> um, I know some friends that have played some pickup ball there, and I've always wanted to. <laughs> For those on the call, I'm six foot eight and a half. It's hard to tell with the camera. <laughs> so fun fact, Ben and I used to work in the legislature together. Oh, nice. And, uh, worked on some legislation way back in the day. Our bosses both worked in districts uh, in Southwest Michigan. Interesting, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And I have seen you, Christy, in Lansing before. <laughs> All right, we got everybody in. You ready, John? I'm ready. All right. <laughs> President Gerald Ford. <laughs> President Ford. Wonderful. Thank you so much, John, for joining us here. And I need to do a quick refresh of the page because we are now going to be approaching our final question. Well, thank you to all of our candidates for joining us and telling us a little bit about why you're uh, seeking office and looking to serve our community. We appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thank you. All right, sharing the screen and we are back in action.
All right, your points before your final. Your topic is the National Register of Historic Places. Please message your bids. We have Benzie Scholars, not here. We have Alternative Facts with 24, The Smart Choice with 20, Samaritas Senior Living with 20, and TCYPs with 14. And for our final question, the host will be Rachel Johnson. So at this point, please message your bids in the chat so I can add them to the scores. Yes, you can put in the maximum of whatever your points are. Wow, a lot of our teams are all in. <laughs> confident. <laughs> All right, we got everybody in. Uh, Rachel, are you with us? I sure am. All right, here we go. This place is located in downtown Traverse City. Around 2005, renovations were nearly complete on an $8.5 million restoration of this grand old lady. And anybody who gets it wrong is never allowed to come back to Traverse City. Just to make it. <laughs> You don't know this, we're taking away your card. Ooh. I'm gonna throw a little shade at the TCYPs because one of my colleagues from Cherryland is on the TCYPs. Rob, make me proud here. Otherwise you can't be on the company team anymore. <laughs> the stakes, oh, the stakes are high. high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't screw up, Rob. <laughs> You guys made him nervous. He hasn't responded yet. Oh. <laughs> Hot Connor did respond with rude. <laughs> Fair enough, but you did this to yourselves. Well, while those TCYPs seem to be responding to the shade, they don't seem to be responding to the question. Indeed, indeed. Mm -hmm. Oh, there they are. All right, everyone's in. And the answer is City Opera House. <laughs> Give me one moment so I can compile final scores. Present. Back around, share screen, and we are in. The final round, final scores. In fourth place, we have TCYPs with 27. In a tie for second, we have Samaritas Senior Living and the Smart Choice. And our winners tonight with 48 points, alternative facts. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Can you remind us um, which team Alternative Facts is, where they're from? Um, Max Anderson was the person that was responding and writing the answers, so I'm unsure who else was all on the team. <laughs> Very awesome. Well, with that, Ben, looks like we are all done and, and wrapped up with trivia. So um, to the winning team, Alternative Facts, thank you so much. Thank you to all of our teams for playing. And if we could have the um, winning team go ahead and email Molly. Um, she put her uh, email up in the chat right now. If you can email her so you can claim your prize. We have four downtown gift certificates for our winning team. And we appreciate all of you taking the time to join us and try out this new format of an event. Um, obviously, COVID has changed a lot for everyone. So we appreciate you giving trivia uh, on Zoom a try. And thank you again to our presenting sponsor, DTE, and supporting sponsor, Huntington. Um, we appreciate your partnership and your support. And thanks to all of our great candidates who are looking to serve. And we appreciate you taking the time and helping us learn more about you. So we'll look forward to, um, to continuing our investor outreach and education on the upcoming election. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>